The year 2023 was an active year for Pakistan's diplomacy. Our diplomatic efforts were aimed at increasing Pakistan's international profile and building relations with countries in all regions of the world with frequent high-level exchanges and visits. During the first half of 2023, former Prime Minister undertook official visits to Azerbaijan, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, and the United Kingdom. Former Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari visited Iraq, Hungary, Japan, Jordan, Lithuania, Russia, and the United Arab Emirates. While former Minister of State Hina Rabani Kar undertook official visits to Belgium, Denmark, Norway, Qatar, Sri Lanka, Sweden, Uzbekistan, and the United Kingdom. And in the later half of this year, Prime Minister Anwar al-Haq Kakar undertook bilateral visits to Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates. He also attended important multilateral conferences in China, Saudi Arabia, Uzbekistan, United Arab Emirates, and the United States. Foreign Minister Jalil Abbas Jilani has visited China, Azerbaijan, United Arab Emirates, and the United Kingdom to attend multilateral conferences and meetings. In London, he chaired the 10th Commonwealth Youth Ministers' Meeting. Pakistan also hosted high-level visits from Afghanistan, Belarus, China, Denmark, Ethiopia, Germany, Iran, Russia, Rwanda, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, United States, and the European Union. We continue to pursue political and sectoral dialogues to institutionalize bilateral relationships. Bilateral political consultations were held with Australia, Azerbaijan, Belgium, Brunei, Bulgaria, China, Denmark, Finland, France, Georgia, Iran, Ireland, Japan, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Mexico, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Russia, Spain, Sweden, and Turkey. Pakistan continued to pursue active multilateral diplomacy in 2023. There was sustained engagement with the United Nations, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Economic Cooperation Organization, and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. We are encouraged with the results of our diplomatic efforts in multilateral settings. At the beginning of the year, Pakistan hosted the International Conference on Climate Resilient Pakistan in Geneva in collaboration with the United Nations to gain support for Pakistan in the aftermath of the devastating floods of 2022. In September, Foreign Minister chaired the 10th Commonwealth Youth Ministers Meeting in London, and in October, Pakistan assumed the chairmanship of SCO Heads of Government Meeting. In view of our enduring commitment to inclusive multilateralism, Foreign Minister of Pakistan attended the SCO Council of Foreign Ministers held in May in Goa, India. Pakistan also made a formal request to join BRICS. We hope that BRICS will move forward on Pakistan's request in line with its commitment to inclusive multilateralism. Pakistan won elections of several important multilateral bodies and institutions. These included membership of United Nations Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, Executive Board of UNESCO, Executive Council of International Oceanographic Commission, Executive Council of OPCW, Vice Chair of UNESCO Executive Board, and Chair of the Conference of Parties of the Chemical Weapons Convention. We continue to reinforce our traditional partnerships with China, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and the wider Islamic world. These relationships are based on mutual trust and friendship and characterized by a tradition of robust dialogue and exchange of bilateral visits. Pakistan and China reaffirmed commitment to China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which completed 10 years in 2023. 
bilateral engagement and cooperation remained robust. The two countries held bilateral consultation mechanisms on consular, maritime affairs, counterterrorism, arms control, and nuclear proliferation. Relations with Turkey continue to advance with high-level exchanges and cooperation. A significant outcome this year was the culmination of the Milgram class Corvette project initiated in 2018. Under this project, four Corvettes were built jointly for Pakistan Navy, symbolizing close partnership between Pakistan and Turkey in defense production. In May, Pakistan and Turkey joined, uh, ratified the trade and goods agreement presenting an opportunity of great potential in economic domain. Pakistan and Saudi Arabia continued to maintain high-level dialogue and engagement. In 2023, several important understandings and agreements were reached to bolster bilateral trade and investment, especially in energy and IT sectors. The two sides signed the agreement on the Road to Makkah project to facilitate the Hujjaj from Pakistan with the shifting of immigration and customs clearance project processes during the Hajj session from Saudi Arabia to Islamabad. With the establishment of SIFC, economic cooperation and engagement with GCC countries gained momentum, especially in the domain of energy and information technology. Pakistan GCC and GCC agreed to conclude free trade agreement which will be the first such free trade agreement concluded by GCC with any country. Relations with the United, Nation, United States continue to advance in addition to exchange of high-level visits and meetings. The two countries held the ninth TIFA Ministerial Council and dialogues on climate change and environment, health, energy security, counterterrorism, and defense. Pakistan-Russia relations maintained a positive tra trajectory as the two countries exchanged several high-level visits. Intergovernmental Commission on Trade, Economic, Scientific, and Technological Cooperation and bilateral political consultations were also held during this year. Our region remains an important focus of our foreign policy. Pakistan has consistently expressed its desire to see a peaceful, prosperous, stable and connected Afghanistan. So that Afghanistan emerges as a trade and energy connectivity conduit to our region. As a firm adherent of regional approaches to the situation in Afghanistan, Pakistan participated in meetings and mechanisms aimed at promoting peace in Afghanistan. It also remained committed to dialogue and engagement with Afghanistan as the two countries continue to explore avenues of cooperation, especially in the economic domain. We also remained engaged with the Afghan authorities on issues relating to security and border management. This was a significant year in Pakistan-Iran relations. In May, the two sides inaugurated Manth Pishin Border Sustenance Marketplace and the 220 kilowatt uh, Bolan Gabz electricity transmission line. Five-year strategic trade cooperation plan 2023 to 28 in June was envisages achieving bilateral target of US $5 billion. The two sides have also agreed to institutionalize bilateral economic consultations. In pursuance of our vision of regional connectivity and mutual prosperity, Pakistan also continued its robust engagement with countries in Central Asia within the context of ECO. Pakistan promoted regional cooperation in trade, transport, connectivity, energy, tourism, and economic growth and productivity. In 2023, Pakistan continued to cooperate and engage with our partners in Europe to develop deeper economic collaboration 
cooperation in climate action and finding opportunities in higher education and employment. We also continue to engage with, e with the European Union on the importance and utility of GSP+. In March, the European Union removed Pakistan from the list of high-risk countries recognized, recognizing Pakistan's performance in overcoming technical issues in anti-money laundering and counter-financing counter of terrorism. Counter-terrorism, arms control and climate change were key areas of engagement with bilateral and regional partners. Bilateral talks were held on counter-terrorism with China, Iran, Russia, United Kingdom, United States and the European Union. In line with the principles of policy of the Constitution, we continue to advance engagement with the Islamic countries, both bilaterally and in the framework of OIC. Pakistan participated actively in OIC contact groups on Palestine and Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan persistently advocated the causes of the Muslim Ummah, including protection of the holy Islamic sites and on Islamophobia and acts of Quran burnings in Europe. Pakistan also continued to advocate for the Palestine cause and supported international initiatives calling for an end to siege in Gaza and provision of immediate and humanitarian assistance to the Palestinian people. Pakistan also sent humanitarian supplies for the people of Gaza. Pakistan also reinforced its outreach and dialogue with ASEAN and its member countries with several high-level meetings and visits and implementation of ASEAN-Pakistan engagement plan. Pakistan continued to pursue a policy of peaceful neighborhood based on mutual respect and sovereign equality with all countries of, the, of South Asia. Relations with Sri Lanka, Maldives, Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh witnessed positive developments with high-level engagement and dialogue. There were no major developments in Pakistan-India relations. A Hindutva-inspired nationalist government continues to act as a regional bully and create hurdles in development of normal bilateral relations. Pakistan has consistently maintained that bilateral relations cannot fully normalize until the resolution of all outstanding dispute, especially the core dispute of Jammu and Kashmir. Under the Pakistan-India Protocol on Visits to Religious Shrines of 1974, Pakistan issued over 6,000 visas to Sikh and Hindu Indian pilgrims to visit Pakistan for various religious and festival occasions. Pakistan also released <coughs> 486 Indian prisoners this year, of which 380 were civilians and rest were fishermen. India continued to use its military might to suppress the people of IIOJK. Throughout the year, Pakistan raised its voice for the people of Kashmir at all relevant bilateral and regional forums. We also categorically rejected the Indian Supreme Court's judgment on the status of Jammu and Kashmir. The Foreign Minister of Pakistan wrote letters to the leadership of the United Nations, OIC and the EU, inviting their attention to different developments in IIOJK including the latest illegal decision of the Indian Supreme Court. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation consistently expressed support for the Kashmir cause. Two meetings of OIC contact group on Jammu and Kashmir were held this year in March and September. OIC Secretary General Special Envoy on Jammu and Kashmir and a delegation of British parliamentarians visited Azad Jammu and Kashmir to obtain first-hand information of the situation on the ground. These visits also brought a spotlight on the plight of Kashmiri people and atrocities of Indian occupation forces. The well-being, welfare and facilitation of our diaspora remains our priority. 
our missions abroad continue to facilitate overseas Pakistanis and provide relief and assistance to those in distress. In 2023, several measures were taken to move towards automation for effective and, re and responsive service delivery for overseas Pakistanis. In February, online attestation of power of attorney for overseas Pakistani was launched globally in all Pakistani missions abroad. In March, Pakistan ratified the Apostle Convention. The government of Pakistan has started accepting apostle documents issued by contracting parties to the convention. Pakistan's embassy in Khartoum, supported by our missions in Jeddah and Cairo, safely evacuated 1,500 Pakistanis in May and June 2023. Similarly, 68 Pakistani residents were safely evacuated from Niger in July 2023. Our relevant missions also coordinated with the local authorities in Italy, Greece and Libya to rescue Pakistanis abroad, aboard capsized migrant boats and to repatriate dead bodies. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Pakistani missions abroad will continue to promote Pakistan's external relations and protect its interests at the global level. Thank you.